In this video, the lab guide is going to get even more interesting because we're actually going to configure uh, micro SIP. We're going to get the phones working. We're going to get them ringing. We're going to be able to leave voicemails and test to see if we can hear those voicemails back and delete them and whatnot. So uh, I hope this video is something that you enjoy and let's go ahead and jump into it. The phones that I'm using for this lab are MicroSIP, and you can go to microsip.org. Then you'll go to downloads, and what you'll want to get is the portable zip file. Don't get the exe, get the portable zip file. I've already downloaded that, so I have it here. And what you want to do is extract it to a folder. And then I'm going to name that, I'm going to make it a hyphen one and then I'll extract it again to the folder and then I'll make that hyphen two. Let me see where do I rename it right here hyphen two and then we'll extract it as many times as we want to have phones. So for me I only want three different phones so I'm going to only extract it three different times and then what we do is we go in here and we click on the microsip.exe to get our different phones up and running. And then you can just go back over here and go to the next instance and so on and so forth. That's how you'll have multiple phones running on just one workstation. There is one tip that I want to mention. If you want to completely close this out, you have to hit the drop down and go to exit because if you just simply hit the X, it's still running in the background. You'll have to open it up here and get back to it. You could also exit from here. But again, if you want to close the application out, you have to exit. Just hitting the X won't close the application fully. Once we have our different instances of these micro SIP phones, we need to add an account so that the phone knows where the server is and how to register to it. You can see that for extension 102, I've already made the account. However, I'll make the account for extension 101 now so that you can see how to do it. You go to this little drop down arrow here and you click on add account and then you put in for the account name. I'm going to put the extension for the SIP server. I'm going to put the IP address of my uh, free PBX server. Same thing for the SIP proxy username will again be the extension. The domain will be your SIP server again, your free PBX. Your password is going to be the password that we created earlier for this extension. So for extension 101, the password is Cisco 101. And for extension 102, the password is Cisco 102. And then for the display name, we're going to put in the appropriate user. And then that's all you have to do. Be sure to watch down here in the lower left hand corner of the actual phone, because that will let us know if there were any issues such as like the username was wrong or the password was wrong or there was a timeout, as you can see, both of these phones connected fine and it says online, online. It also gives us the extension number off to the right. You can go over here to settings if you want to choose a different speaker or a different microphone. For me, I'm going to use my computer speakers, but I'm going to use my uh, microphone that I'm recording on right now. Hopefully that won't cause any issues with the recording. And I'll do the same on the other side as well. And now with that saved, I'm going to place a test call from 101 over to 102. The call goes through and you can see that I'm able to answer the call. And then you can even see the microphone on both sides is moving up and down. We can see that the call is connected and how long it's been connected for. Now I'll end the call. With the call ended now, I'm going to make a call from 102 over to 101. And we get the same experience. Everything is connected. So I'll end this call now as well. We did set these extensions up with voicemail though, so we want to test that as well. I'll call from 101 to 102, but this time I'm going to decline the call. Extension. One, zero, two, is on the phone. Please leave your message after the 
And as, and as you can see, we reached the voicemail. So right now what I'm saying should be recorded as a message. I'm going to end that call. And then also, I want to test that the voicemail for 101 works as well. This time I'm going to set it to do not disturb. And you can tell which of these buttons are active because they'll be blue instead of a grayish color. So let's call 101 from 102 now. It goes directly to voicemail. And so I'll just wait for this to be done. I'll record a message for 101 and then we're going to go and check these uh, once I hang up this call. Test voicemail for 101. All right, so I ended the call. Now in order to check the recordings, we have to dial star nine seven. And so I'll press one. Message. Message from phone number one zero two. Press voicemail for one zero one. Press three for advanced options. And then Five, you the I just want to wait for the option to delete it. So seven is to delete the message. No more At this point, we've tested the calls between the two different phones, and we've also made sure that voicemail is working for both of them. I'll end this video here and in the next video we'll start talking about SIP trunks and how to get our different PBX systems integrated with each other. So we'll have the different groups actually interfacing with each other where group 01 will partner up with group 02, group 03 will partner up with 04 and so on and so forth.